So now in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit, but first I thought I would demonstrate it and show the uh, diagram that I'm going to uh, go by. So, this is the 555 timer, that's the integrated circuit there. It is wired in by stable mode, or you could call it a flip-flop. So it's by stable because it's stable in two positions. You can see this LED is on right now. And I wired it so that the blue LED would be lit Well, the output is low. So it's zero volts. If I hit the set button, now the red LED lights up. The output is high right now. So it's not as high of a voltage as the power supply, but it is as high as it can get, as close as it can get to the uh, red rail here. And so now the red LED is lit, and it's going to stay lit until I hit the reset button. So it is stable. I have to do something to get the output to change. So now we have here the pin layout of the 555 timer. So all the ones I've come across have this pin layout. This is the NE555. It's a good idea to uh, consult the data sheet anyways. But in any case you can see here we have the ground pin, pin number one, top left pin there. And there is a little divot up here. You can see that here. Some of them either have a uh, little divot there or they have both. And the uh, pin number eight there, the top right pin there, that goes to the VCC, which is the positive side of the power supply when you're using a uh, single supply as we are now. So it's five volts. Ground is the uh, negative rail. And then we consider the voltage in relationship to ground, the VCC, which can vary quite a bit with this component, but that goes to the positive side of the power supply to uh, keep it simple. And you can see those right here in the schematic. So pin number one to the uh, negative rail to ground, pin number eight to the uh, positive side of the power supply. So now, we already have switches here. As you can see, one end of them goes to the negative rail. That's because pin four and pin two respond to zero volts. And so that will give a direct connection to the negative rail, which we consider zero volts. So. I'm just going to take a couple jumpers. You can see that one goes over there. These switches are always connected on the top and they're always connected on the bottom. They are separated top to bottom. So when you close the switch, it connects that top to the bottom. And uh, so it goes across two once, uh, once you close it. So that's gonna go to pin number two and to the bottom of the switch there. This jumper to a pin number four and that's going to the switch right there. So we have uh, those jumpers in place now. And uh, so you can see reset and set. But uh, the actual name is a trigger for pin number two and reset for pin number four. So it responds to a low signal, but we don't want to uh, leave them floating because they will pick up stray signals in the air and stuff and uh, if other stuff bumps it. So we want to make sure that it's connected to the positive side of the power supply but with a fairly high value resistor, 10 kilo ohm. Is that value doesn't matter but 10 kilo ohm works well. So we're gonna either put that to the jumper there or if you want you can even put it directly to the pin. It doesn't matter that's all one conductive area, one node everything across the bottom there. We could even put it over here. Does not matter. Does exactly the same thing. But uh, I'm going to stick it right there. And then a 10 kilo ohm resistor again at that pin four to the positive rail right there. And so that's going to keep five volts at the pin until we close the switch. And when we close the switch, then you will have a direct connection to ground. So whatever current gets through the resistor just gets sucked right to ground. So it's just the pin number four. In this case, if we close it, we'll only see zero volts when the switch is pressed. When it's open, it will only see five volts. And uh, current doesn't flow through the pin. It just sees the uh, voltage. So we have that out of the way. Oh, yeah, I forgot about uh, this one. So the uh, threshold pin, that also monitors voltage. It looks for a high signal. and. Uh, so we're going to put it to ground. You can see six right there to uh, the negative rail. 
and that will tell it not to do anything so what it does is when it gets a high signal it sets the output just like the uh, reset pin right there so when you're using something that's oscillating in a stable mode then it bounces between a low signal to pin 2 and a high signal to pin 6 a capacitor we're not going to do that in this circuit we're just going to avoid a high signal there so that pin 6 doesn't do anything by putting it directly to ground that is taken care of so that is it for wiring this circuit in by stable mode but of course whatever the outputs doing we we don't know you can't see it unless you you measure it or in this case we're going to add LEDs so you can see it as pin number three there and so I could just uh, run a jumper down kind of squeeze the uh, LEDs and resistors uh, within here or whatnot but instead I'm going to take a green jumper right here and one thing you'll notice too on the data sheet that uh, the location of the components in this square is not the same as the physical component it just shows the connections and so you have to make the uh, circuit however you want based on what the actual pins are the uh, drawing on here is going to be laid out however the uh, person drawing it thinks it works best but also usually you kind of have your inputs on the left side and then your output on the right side on the drawings that's kind of the flow and uh, top to uh, bottom but uh, physical components don't always uh, work out the way that you see on the schematic so we will zoom back right there and our output will be right there so I kind of tilted to the side there we go we have that right there so now we're just going to focus on the output three right there and uh, that should be good right there and to begin with let's do the uh, blue LED blue LEDs are naturally brighter than red LEDs at least all the ones I've ever come across so we're gonna put the short lead the cathode to the output long lead the anode's gonna head towards the positive side of the power supply so I'm gonna put it one uh, hole away over to here short lead is going to where the uh, green jumper is the uh, long lead the anode up one short lead is the cathode and I'm going to use a one kilo ohm resistor there uh, its that value does not matter but as I said they're naturally brighter and if we use uh, more than four times the uh, resistance I find then it tends to be close to about the same brightness so that is going to go to the positive rail because we want the blue LED to light up for whatever reason it doesn't really matter you can wire it however you want but I want it so it lights up when the output is more negative and there I kinda drew the uh, current path so it's actually electron flow if you want to think of it that way or you can think of it as conventional current that way as long as you uh, follow how it is flowing now the red LED so the anode is gonna go to the output the long lead the cathode is gonna head towards ground towards the negative rail down there so I'm going to uh, set it right here you can see long lead the anode is going where that jumper is short lead the cathode going down to a blank row right there and I'm gonna use a 220 ohm resistor it works pretty good for a red LED when you're using 5 volts and uh, it's about the minimum technically you can use a lower value resistor but 220 ohm resistors are really common a lot of times that might be the only resistor you get I bought LEDs they gave me 220 ohm resistors they're just a really common value so uh, even though I could technically go lower they are about the lowest value you want and they are really common so there we go we turn the power on and in this case the output was low when we turned it on and I drew on here little images there so right now the outputs low we know that because I wired it so the blue LED will be low if we want to get it high we have to set it that is to pin number two so this switch heads to pin number two when we close the switch and give it a low signal 
and the LED did not light because I stuck this resistor in the positive rail. There we go. If your circuit doesn't work right, so I did this all in one shot, the uh, build, and uh, so I miswired it. I missed that earlier. If your circuit doesn't work, probably you miswired something. Either you stuck a component in the wrong spot, or you put an LED in backwards. And so, if that uh, resistor had been in the right spot, next thing I would have done is check which way the LED was. And uh, those are the two simple solutions that will probably solve the problem almost every time. But uh, we saw that the blue one was on, so I knew the output had gone low. And uh, so, the output should go high whenever it can go low. And uh, if you wired everything right. So in any case, there we go. We have it now wired as a flip-flop. And so it's bi-stable because right now we are stable. Nothing's going to change the blue LED, especially because I have this pull-up resistor. Make sure we keep a high signal at the, at the uh, input until we hit the button. So we actually have to do something to change the state. The circuit itself is stable, not doing anything. Now it's stable in another position. It's stable in two positions, so it's bi-stable. We have to do something to uh, knock it off. So the circuit's stable. I'm the one that is changing it. So stable in two states. And you could call it a flip-flop. So, in any case, hopefully that all made sense. And uh, I'll try to... Uh, Make sure I put this diagram up on Patreon. I may have already done that. I'm trying to do that more for Patreon supporters or just anybody that visits my Patreon page. Put my schematic diagrams there. And if you want to donate, that's uh, great. Uh, you don't have to though. But uh, the more donations I get, the more diagrams like this I will put together and the more videos I will make of them. So that is how I will determine how much people like my diagram videos because they do not get more views and in fact they're getting less views than videos that do not have a diagram so in any case either way I'll try to post more diagrams there so please visit I put the link down in the description uh, but in any case please just watch my other videos that helps out uh, the most without any uh, extra effort from anybody uh, other than hopefully enjoying the video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one